Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're feeling jolly because I sure am. It's the second day of December. And this is the K&Kale Show, episode 272, where we learn to be better artists. My name is Keenan Lafferty, and today is going to be a very special day on the K&Kale Show because we are going to be finishing our work with Violet over here, which is also why it's a day late. I've been slaving away on this. Really wanted to get it to a point. Here, I'll just go ahead and click on these layers on and off. Adding detail to this. Hey, that's the title of today. And we're going to be talking about how I went about doing this. And uh, yeah, we're going to be having a good time with that. And I time-lapsed it. So I'm super excited to entertain you guys with that. And then we will move on to some actual teaching. We will move on to some actual teaching after that, believe it or not. And I'll show you guys how to do it yourselves. But before we get into the actual tutorial, we need to take a stroll down a very special place. And that is, of course, the lovely lane because you guys are awesome. Look at all these amazing pieces that have been being submitted by you guys out there. If you would like to join us, just type in that tiny URL right there, slash Art. Go like the page, submit your art, get featured on the show. And most importantly, come get some milk and cookies. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into an overview. An overview, because adding detail is a very, is a very vague term. It could mean a lot of things. So what, what exactly am I talking about there? Well, I'll tell you. I'll show you and I'll tell you. So let's go ahead and pick a nice uh, color that will show up over everything. We're going to be talking about a few things today, ladies and gentlemen. First thing is rim lighting. Rim lighting is basically stuff like this, stuff like that. All the things that are going to be happening on the edges, right? This is going to help show the form of your character and all that good stuff, right? And that's basically the blue light that's coming from over here. And then we also have orange light that's coming from here. And you can see rim lighting happening there and there and there. So we'll be talking about that. Next we'll be talking about is contrast. And contrast is basically the difference between your lights and your darks, and more so the values, right? The difference in value. So if we were to turn this piece black and white, you can see the differences between how light this is and how dark that is. We're going to be talking about how to properly choose those colors, how to properly choose those values, so that way it's consistent and cohesive throughout your entire piece. Uh, and uh, third, next to last is edges. Edges is a pretty easy one. It's just about how clean are your edges. You want to stay away from stuff like this. Like you zoom in, uh, you can see all like these nasty artifacts towards the edges there. It's like, ugh. ugh. We're going to go ahead and kind of clean that up a little bit. You don't want any of that crap in there. All right. Now, last but not least, texture. Texture. Awesome some texture. And that can be seen right here. This is the major awesome stuff that I really want to show you guys today. And we'll be using a custom brush, which I will be uploading to Patreon afterwards. Uh, it is this one right here. It's just called... Uh, I call it metal scratches, but it's really good for adding that texture type of thing in there. See how nice that is? And uh, we'll be talking about how to use that. Really, you can use any type of uh, texture brush. I also have this chalk one, which has some nice texture to it too. But for the most part, we'll be dealing with that one there. Alrighty, but before we get into the actual lesson, I do have to just entertain you. I do have to entertain you. So let's go ahead and pull up our good old uh, time lapse. Go ahead and pull up the time lapse. And let's get started with that. And I'll talk to you guys a little bit about my process. And you guys can see in real time, of course, because this is how fast I actually work, uh, my process. And um, yeah, really just how many times I will repaint this face. Now, this is always, I'm always a little bit kind of touchy when I show this type of stuff because I'll, I always want it to be perfect. I want you guys to think that I get things right the first time, all the time. But unfortunately, every time I get to this point in a painting where I'm adding the detail and putting, especially like refining the face, it's a very, it's like a delicate dance between like cleaning things up, like adding detail um, without changing the original face that I liked. Because before I started overpainting the face, I, I've kind of gotten used to it. And the way that I look at it, it's like I'm, I'm used to that character and I don't want to change too much about it because it's very interesting how just a tiny little shift in the nose, like from like painting over it, if the, if the nose moves slightly up, it changes the face completely or even just like a slight difference in the eyebrow, like if it's down a little bit more, if the eye's a little more open or closed, it can change the entire expression, the entire feeling of the, of the piece. And that is both really cool and really kind of daunting because you're always kind of stepping, like I'm always turning on and off the overpaint layers. And I'll also show you that. I'll show you the overpaint layers, the different phases that I went through. Uh, I turn those on and off to make sure that I'm still preserving the original character that was in the original piece. So yeah, but this is always like really, really fun. I love doing, like I love it when I can turn on and off the layer and I can see the details that have been added while I have still like preserved 
the character. I've still preserved what I liked about it. So anyway, speaking of painting the face, this one, I think I end up, like I like this one, but this is a good example of when I turn it on and off, I realized that I had changed the face. I had changed the character from what I originally wanted it to be and from what I liked from the original kind of sketch or just before we did any overpainting. So what you'll see that I do here, see you can see me switching on and off the layers right there, is uh, I end up kind of like erasing and trying again. I almost start completely over. And again, that's just kind of coming from, you know, not only am I just really kind of, I don't want to say like I'm, I'm a perfectionist, but it just, I have a certain look that I like to have for my faces and for, especially for Violet. Like I just really get attached to, I mean, you guys have probably done this. Like you'll sketch something out, you'll do a sketch of a face and you like the way that that face looks. And then as you try to paint it, it changes a little bit. It always changes. And that's really the, the main thing that I've always tried to focus on is how to retain that original character that you draw, say in the pencil stage or the black and white stage and not lose that once you start adding in the detail. So, and my best, like I said, my best advice for doing that is work in small little bits and, and turn your layers on and off and just check back and forth, check back and forth. And you will live long and prosper. All right, so now that I actually got the face done, now moving on to doing some details around the clothes because, actually let me rewind this just a little bit. Uh, right after I finished the face, or did I do this later? Oh, I think I actually did this later. I actually added some, or I did it earlier. I added extra light onto this area, which is like just on the edge of her jacket and everything. And this is because of the contrast. This is because I noticed that there was a huge contrast between the skin and the shadow of the skin. And the rest of the piece just didn't have that same amount of contrast. It felt like the light was just like magically affecting her face more than anything else on the piece. And we'll also talk about that too. Anyway, uh, let's see how much longer we got on this time lapse because, uh, okay, cool. I'm just adding in that little detail. You'll see me very quickly like kind of throw in those little uh, like flicks. I'm doing like flicks with that texture brush to kind of add in the, the leather texture, the leather texture. And I'll show you guys how to do that real time too. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'll show you how to do that real time. But that's basically it. That's basically it. So we can go ahead and close that down. Let's go ahead and talk about that. Everything that just happened, let's talk about, okay? Because I don't expect you to actually learn anything from that. And that's just for your viewing pleasure. But let's talk about each of these overpaint layers. So here's where we started. Here's where we started. Oh yeah, perfect. So this is where we started last week. Now, I really wanna draw your guys' attention to uh, the very first thing, and that is right here. Do you see the contrast that's happening between this part of the face and then the dark part of the face here? Well, do you notice how there's not as much contrast happening here and here? And that was the first problem that I saw is that, okay, I really like the contrast that's happening on this face because it feels very dramatic. It feels awesome. But the problem is, is that that light is not affecting anywhere here or here or here or here. It's not affecting anything else on the piece except for her face. So the first thing that I did was I added some brighter textures. I added some brighter, um, values rather, add some brighter values to the side of her body like that. See, and then I went in there. So I wanna show you guys the difference that actually going in and doing your last little bit of texturizing can do. So it takes from this point to this point. And see how much more like leathery and like nice that feels? It feels so much nicer and yet there's not that much that's actually going on. And I'll show you guys how to do that in just a moment. Now the next thing is, let's see. Oh, I added some more details here on the sleeve. Just kind of like adding in some more reds, some hue shifts, interesting. So let's take a look at this. And the way, just like last week guys, with our hue shifts, a good way to test these out, and I would urge you guys to do this on your own pieces, or if you download this one, take a look at it for yourself. But just go ahead and take your eyedropper and move it along these gradients. And do you see how, and, and you're looking at this right here. This is your little Richter scale. So see how it goes from red and then it goes all the way over down to purple? See, see how it moves like this? It's called a hue shift and it looks freaking awesome. So always do it, okay? Always do it in everything. <laughs> now, there's more to it than that, but basically hue shifts are awesome. And uh, yeah, you should always do them. If you wanna know more about hue shifts, you should go back and take a look at um, last week's episode. Last week's episode. If you wanna take a look at last week's episode, just click uh, right here up in the video 
and then this will, there will be a little link right here and you can go and check out last week's video. All right, so that basically does it for the changes that we made, changes that we made. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about, let's talk about rim light first. Let's go ahead and get to rim light. So let's pull up our latest version. Let's pull up our latest version and let's talk about that. Let's talk about it. So you might be asking yourself, well, how do I know what colors to pick for my rim light? Well, it's very easy because in the very first episode, we decided on what our background was gonna be. And this is very important because it's going to distinguish or it's going to affect all the other colors in our piece. And we have a very blue background, obviously. We have a blue background. And I imagine that off in the distance, there would be sort of like, maybe like a moonlight or a very soft, bright blue light that's kind of coming down on uh, for the top of the character. And that is going to be very handy because we're going to be using that color as our rim light. And basically the way that rim light works is, is very simple. It's very, very simple. In fact, most of the time you can get away with just using one color, right? So let's take this color right here, this blue that we used on the edge of the head right here. Let's just go ahead and take that color and then let's put it on the edge of say the thumb. Hey, that looks really nice. Let's put it right there too on the edge of that hand. And see how you can just now begin like popping out areas of your character. You can pop out areas of your character and really start to show the edges of those forms, right? Now in general, for my rim lights, I like to darken them. I like to still keep in mind like the type of uh, material that it's going onto, right? So maybe for the skin, maybe make it just a little bit lighter, right? Maybe, or maybe a little bit darker because the skin will absorb a little bit more of that light will absorb a little bit more. So let's go ahead and darken it a little bit. But then on the, the leather of the gloves, that can be really bright because it's a little bit more, imagine the leather is a little bit more hardened, so it's a little bit more reflective. So we can have some bright areas like that. So there you go. Make sure to have some nice contrast in between, right? Some nice contrast in between there to really differentiate, you know, the differences between, you know, the knuckles and the and the fingers, and there you go. That, that's basically rim light and why it's awesome. Why it's awesome and it's good to set up. Makes everything look really dramatic and awesome too. I, just, I love the way rim light works. But anyway, I'm not gonna spend too much time, even though I seriously wanna sit here and like begin refining. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that because this is just a tutorial and we got some more important things. We got bigger fish to fry right now. And that is contrast, contrast, okay. So um, you guys might have seen me turn on this layer earlier. You might wonder, whoa, how did he turn everything black and white? Well, it's very simple. All you gotta do is just create, this is actually just a layer of pure black, right? It's just pure black. Or I guess in this case, it's like a very, very dark red, but you get the point. You can either, it just needs to be a dark color, right? So just create a layer with a dark color over top of everything. And then if you go into your layer properties, which is right down here, you can select something called color. And once you do that, it basically turns your piece into a black and white version of itself and allows you to check your values, check your values, which is very, very important. And like I said before, values is the difference between your light shapes right here and the shadows, right? The shadows, I can make that a different color. And the shadows, okay? So this is dark parts and these are the light slight parts. So the differences between those two things in terms of being grayscale. So before, here, actually, let me show you guys this. Let's go ahead and go back to our old version before we did any of this stuff. And you can see here how the values are not on point. The value, see, it's much lighter here in the face than it is in the clothes. And I imagine the, the leather is, it's still a very dark leather, but there needed to be more contrast. So now let's go ahead and put on that other layer. Let's put on the latest one. And do you see how we added lighter uh, values into there? And now it feels more cohesive. It feels like these values and the values in the face belong together. And that's what's really important. That's why this really helps to put on this layer and just kind of check your values every now and then. So, and the reason why we do that, the reason why we do that is contrast, contrast. And that is basically, okay, so we're going at, this is a good way to check your contrast, okay? So right here, let's check out the lightest part of the face. And then we pick the shadow and look at how far we went. Pay attention to this. So we went from here all the way down to here. Now, 
if we're not doing something similar with the leather, see the leather, we're also making a large jump. So that way we can say that our values are a little bit more cohesive because we're having a large jump versus the way that it was before. It was probably like right here to like right there. Do you see it like the up and down distance was barely anything. So we needed to increase, increase the contrast on our other pieces. Whew. All right, cool. Explain that. That's really, I hope that made sense. That's basically how you check your contrast, check your values. All righty then, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go ahead and take a look at edges. Edges are another very fun thing to do. And this is usually towards the end of the piece, towards the end of the, like once you're finishing up, a good way to check your edges and clean up your edges is, uh, take your eraser and for this piece i use sometimes i like to use the ink brush because it allows you to okay well i'm getting ahead of myself so let's go ahead and duplicate this layer right let's duplicate all of these this group of layers and let's flatten it which is control e control e will now flatten it and now we have a solid sticker of our character now again the reason why i say this is the very last that or one of the last things that you want to do is because Cleaning up your edges relies on, obviously, all your layers need to be on one thing, right? They need to be one layer because then you're going to start going in there and really kind of cleaning up those edges, clean up those little artifacts around the, around the sides, right? Make everything look good. Get rid of, uh, you know, actually, this is already pretty clean because we set it up that way. We set it up pretty well, but this is really just kind of cleaning up the edges as far as I really kind of wanted to bring this face in a little bit too. Like, so just very, very subtly kind of cleaning up those very, very edge parts, those edgy parts. There you go, getting something more like that. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is really the difference between amateur work and professional work. I can't say this enough. You've got to learn how to go from this, and this is, again, at the very end, at the very end, you go in and you clean those edges up, clean up those edges from this to that, right? From this to that and you'll have a professional piece. Now, this does not only apply to the outside. This is not just the silhouette of your character. You also need to make sure that you go in there and look Look at this. Look at how nasty this is. This is disgusting. Like, look, look, this right here. This is what I'm talking about. Look at, <laughs> what the heck? Why did I pull out my magnifying glass? Okay, I'm trying to make a point here. Okay, right here. Look, see this? Look at, look at this crap. Look at how ugly this is. This is ugh. Ugh. All right, we're gonna fix that right now. So again, edges also occur inside your character. So you wanna go in there and you wanna say, okay, well, this is obviously a lighter color and there's going to be darker shadows inside of here. So let's go ahead and really define that edge. Let's get in there and really define where that edge is. Get in there, make that edge look good. There you go. There you go. And, and it can be like a tattered piece. It can be like a tattered, um, you can put some wear and tear in there. But again, even the edges of those things need to be clean, clean. And so take a look at this. So the difference from that to that. See how nice that looks? Now imagine you did that to the entire piece. Once you start doing this, once you start cleaning up the edges of all of your things, of all of your objects, this is another good example right here. Like clean up the edge of the zipper, really show where the edge of it is. Clean, clean shapes and, and these buttons too. Look at how we need to like clean up the edges of those buttons. And again, this is literally one of the last things that I'll do because you don't want to like clean up your edges and then realize that you needed to go in there and be like, oh, well, I, I mean, I cleaned up the edges, but I didn't even like really paint anything. I didn't really like define it. You need to define it first, then refine it. Define it first. So it's like, and this is a good example right here. This chain uh, right here is something that I'm kind of going back and forth on. It's like, well, I could go in here and refine it, but first I still need to do a little bit, maybe I, I still need to, like imagine I hadn't put these lights on yet and the chain was still like, I think it was all just like this color at first. Like, do you see how there still needs to be some added lights in there? We need to put those lights back in, define, then refine. That's that's what I was going for. And then see, look at how much nicer that looks. Look at how much nicer that looks now. Because we took the time to define, then refine. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. So that's my example on edges. So you go ahead and take a look at those two things. You go ahead and click that on and off. 
edges, ladies and gentlemen. All right, now, last but not least, let's go ahead and move into the final part of this exercise, and that is texture. Texture. Okay, so this is a really, really, I saved the easiest for the last because it's, it's deceptively easy. It is deceptively easy. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do this right here. So see how I got like this little texture going on in this leather piece right here, right? You look at that and you're like, oh, well, isn't that nice? But I don't know how to do that. I guess I have to get in there and be like, okay, well, let's get that color. And like, okay, so you just gotta like put in little dots like that and then we have texture, right? This is the way I used to do it and I feel very embarrassed. And I didn't even use like, I'm using the, the chalk brush here. Before I didn't even do that. I, I literally used the round hard brush and I was in there trying to make textures like this, okay? Don't do this. If I catch you doing this, I will find you, okay? I'm gonna show you guys how to do this easily. I'll show you how to do this easily. So the way that you create texture <laughs> is gonna be like this. So the first thing you wanna do is, again, define first. Define what your colors you're going to be using are and find a nice transition. So I really like the values and the colors that we've used here already. But now I wanna, what I wanna do is I wanna go in there and I wanna add in some finer details, the finer details in life, okay? Let's get in there and let's add those. So the way that we're gonna do that is literally we're going to take these colors and we're going to use our special brush right here. This is where our special, I, I call it metal scratches because I can use it on metal, but really it's just a texture brush because you can literally use this for anything. You can use this for anything. So we're gonna go ahead and start going through here and we're gonna lay down some texture in a couple areas. And again, you gotta press kinda hard sometimes. It's a kind of an interesting finicky brush, but it's fun because it's sort of random too. So let's just kinda lay in some texture like that. And really what you wanna look for is subtlety. Subtlety, so you kinda drop in some light colors and then take this color right here, this darker color, just kinda run it back through it. See, see what I'm doing there? So I put some lighter colors in, put some lighter colors in, then take the outer color, run it back through, run it back through. And see, before you know it, you got some texture going. You got some texture in your transitions going. And that's really what this is about. It's about transitionary, transitionary changes, okay? So see, that's basically what I did right there. We're just transitioning and creating texture in our transitions. And that's basically whenever something goes from a lighter stage to a darker stage. So we're just kind of, think of it as you're texturizing your gradient. Texturizing your gradient, I think, is a really good way to put it. So add in some of that. Add in a little bit of that. Let's kind of break it up a little bit. Break it up, okay? And there you have, ladies and gentlemen, some good old texture. Good old texture. Now see, when you look at that, it just looks so much more interesting to the eye. It looks so much nicer. I like it a lot. So let's go ahead and turn it off, turn it on. See? And then you can go back in there and you can really start, because uh, this isn't rounding enough for me. So let's go ahead and take the chalk brush Let's go in there and just kind of smooth it out just a tad bit. Smooth it back out to where it was before. There we go, there we go. Because really a little goes a long way, a little goes a long way. And another reason why I like this chalk brush is because it still adds that texture back in, adds that texture back in. But really the point that I want to drive home is that notice how, notice how the texture appears. You see the texture, from this point, transitioning to this point. You see all the texture here. You don't need to go in here and add texture. You don't need to because it's already in the shadow. It's all sh shaded, right? It's all shaded. The only time that you'll see texture is on transitions, transitions, transitions. That's the most important thing that you can take from this. Because I oftentimes I see people trying to, I mean, you can go in there and be like, okay, well, let's take that, let's take that uh, brush and we'll like, Put some more stuff in here. Let's put some more transition stuff in here. Um, and you can do that, but I just don't really feel like it's necessary. In fact, I kind of don't like it because it just, it feels weird. It, it feels weird to have it go that far. I just like to have it in my early transitions from my lights to my darks. And then once you go into shadow, think of it as everything kind of just like becoming one or there's like less detail in the shadows, more detail in the areas where there's lights. All righty, ladies and gentlemen. Before we go, I do actually wanna just put a couple more little tiny things in there. 
tiny little things in there. There we go. There we go. That's more what I was looking for. Um, but again, this is really going to be, I want you guys to focus on experimentation because really that's what this is all about. Adding that texture in, it takes a little bit of time. You'll be kind of moving your colors around. You'll be picking colors. You'll be kind of moving your, your lights back and forth. But more often than not, I've found that if you spend too much time refining, if you spend too much time refining, uh, sometimes you're already on the wrong track. Oftentimes it's just a couple little things that you have to do, a couple little tiny things that you have to do to get that texture back in your piece. And another thing that I like about putting this on its own layer, that's the other thing, is as you're doing your overpaints, make sure they're on their own layer so you can switch back and forth, take a look at the differences that your painting has made or that your overpainting has made. And then if you don't like it, you can go back in and you can erase things. Be like, hey, I liked how these lights kind of came a little bit further to the left this time. And I like the transition over here, how it was a little bit darker towards the rib cage. And you can literally just erase it. See, now we still have that texture where we put in the lights, but now it's not like overbearing as it was here. But maybe you like that one too, I don't know. Again, it's all about experimentation. So I hope that helps you guys out. We're gonna go ahead and end today's show. We're gonna end today's show, but before we end, I have a very special thing to do, and that is of course, thank my sponsors. Laura Bashir, David Chiariella, and of course my good friend Nonplus. Thank you to these amazing people for sponsoring the show, keeping the lights running at night, and uh, yeah, my favorite people in the world. So be sure to say nice things about them. Nice things about them in the comments. I don't even know if they're gonna read it, but whatever. Those are my sponsors. If you'd like to support the show yourself, get today's PSD as well as the brush. Just click this link right here. Take you to the Patreon. You can support the show, get all kinds of cool stuff. And uh, yeah, today's PSD, most importantly. So go check that out. And yeah, I think that is gonna do it, ladies and gentlemen. This is gonna be done. I'm probably gonna be working on this throughout the night. I'll have it done and posted to my DeviantArt pretty soon. And with that, we're gonna end it, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you guys for joining me on YouTube. Thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. My name is Ken Lafferty. I'll see you guys next week. And until then, you guys take care. See ya.